time people are using way too much conditioner. So I'm going to shake this up and I'm going to put that much. That's it. That's all I'm going to put in my hand. And then I'm going to work this through the tail. And you're going to see this color get darker and the hair get better texture. And it's going to be a lot more manageable and it's going to have a lot more volume. And then I'm just going to brush this into this coat with a bore nylon brush. Now, with a dog with this much coat, it doesn't mean that you're going to want to put a lot more conditioner. What it is, is you're going to put a little bit of conditioner more often. Because the key to the panogenic conditioner is having it go inside the hair, not sitting on the surface like traditional conditioner. Now look at how gorgeous that tail is. about this three-way comb with the wide side, the middle, and the fine, one of the nice things you can do with a dog where it's got some undercoat is you can use it with the middle section and bring that down and it'll pull out all the way to the skin some of this dead hair that needs to come out. You can, you can, you can comb it, you can fluff using the wide side right here. You can come in if you have any mats, and you can kind of, well, this dog doesn't have any because we pulled everything out. But it makes it more versatile when you have all these different options. And like I said, it's real easy to hold it like this and come down the dog and pull out all that dead hair that needs to come out. All right, so that's the three-way comb. And then you'll see this sticking up. And all I want to just go straight up here and then bring that straight down. And you can see how that laid down nice and neat. Same thing here, 90 degrees. Take off those parts that are sticking up right there. Bring that down. And you can see how nice that makes that nice and even. 90 degrees here. Straight down. 90 degrees back. By doing that, that's going to level all that out. And when you comb or brush at 90 degrees, it shows you the problem hairs that need to come off. So now you start to see that leg form instead of just a bunch of furnishing hair. Now the other thing we want too is we want to define that there's a leg here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my comb and I'm going to put my comb right here where that leg should be, defining this leg, and I'm going to pop the hair back. After I pop the hair back, I'm going to take this right here and trim this out. And you can see how that defines that leg there. This is still too bulky here, so I'll bring this 90 degrees forward. Take off those dips, 90 degrees forward, take off those dips, until I get this where it naturally looks like it just blends that leg into there. Okay, so go ahead and get a shot of the other side so you can compare to what that looks like compared to this one right here.
developed a new comb that is more aggressive, so if you want to do some carding, pull out some undercoat, things like that, this is the regular comb. And as you can see, it slides through real easy. I mean, this still does a great job of, you know, pulling out. It's got moderate grip to it right here. But the, the new comb is the definitely, without a doubt, the most aggressive comb on the market. It's lightweight, sharper pins, gets through some heavy duty coats. But as you can see here, I can't even pull this comb through. So that other comb went through with no problem. And this comb here is just really blending and getting this undercoat out. You can see how aggressive that is. So this is the new Panagenics Gold Series comb. Um, if you need a coat to lay down in a certain spot, it'll help with that too. So it just gives you all kinds of benefits to the final finish before you go into the ring. On a hard-coated terrier coat, it'll make it like a Brillo pad. On a Havanese, which has is supposed to be a silky coat with no texture, it will not add texture to it. Now the other thing too, is you're gonna start to see this coat really shine because it's polishing that cuticle at the same time. Now, once we get these crystals activated, and I usually like to do this about an hour before I go into the ring, the crystals will last into the hair about six hours, and then they fall out. So it's nothing that has to be washed out. See how shiny that is? Come and feel this texture. How what kind do you have to get out of here? But it the, the cool thing about all the panogenics products is that they will only enhance the genetic quality of whatever the species is that you put them on, where nobody else can do that. Okay, so now I'm going to take the dryer and I'm going to blow any remaining crystals out because it's not like chalk where the crystals inside is doing anything. The only crystals that are really working are the ones that are activated. That's why this works so good in countries where you can't use any products because there's no way to, to really see or fill anything in this coat. It's not detectable. And it's not detectable because if they try to test it, it will test out like dirt, minerals, things like that. I did a lot of thinking when I invented this. <laughs> <laughs> Great for crafts. For Germany. Yeah. bathed it, dried it, and then once, and they were like, oh, this looks really nice. And I said, wait. And then we went to put the crystals in. And a lot of times on a fine hair, the crystals will create the static electricity. So it'll kind of fly up a little bit. And we use the hydrating spray, and it's just absolutely amazing how that hydrating spray just stops all that static electricity. Okay, so now, Feel the texture in this coat. Amazing, huh? <laughs> it's like magic, and there's nothing inside that coat. Yeah. <laughs> now, let me show you the fun stuff. Okay, so we have we have coat that we can't get to lay down. Now it's more manageable. I can take this coat get it to lay down right where I want it.
and it's healthy, shiny. You have poodles, you have um, bichons, you have, I mean, any breed that you put this on, you can do whatever you need to get that coat perfect. As soon as I bring this back in here, to lay this down, put your hands over that right there. And imagine being a judge filling that coat. Totally natural feel. Yeah, totally that's exactly what they should feel like. To, to, I'm, when I feel this, I can say protection, be water resistant, healthy, all that. But you feel this side over here, and it doesn't have that same feel. It's natural. It's yeah. natural, natural. Yeah. But this still feels natural. Yeah. yeah. Natural and with good texture. Yeah. With, you know, like if this dog went swimming, they could shake and the water would come right off. I have an appointment with her. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we have. And hopefully with you too. Yeah. Okay. I'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. I chain him. She, <laughs> she doesn't let me go anywhere.
on my
combs because this one's too aggressive after the texture crystals. I can't get it through as easy with this one, but with this one I can go ahead and lay it down nice and smooth. This one's grabbing too much. So this is good for finishing. So the original comb is excellent for all your finish work because it can go through a dense coat that has those texture crystals. This is better for your combing out and styling because it's so aggressive that you can't get that the, the good finish on it. See the difference? Which both are, are very essential tools for the finish you want to get on this. My puppy did good. <laughs> first, first yeah. yeah, I was gonna say I, I kept looking over at this drooling all day. This is so cute. My face is just so pretty. Yeah, that's Eric's favorite puppy in show. <laughs>
And because the crystals are not water soluble, you can spray the hydrating spray. Sometimes like a really fine hair, it'll be a little bit of static electricity, but the hydrating spray takes care of that. So all we're gonna do now is we're bring this hair back down to where it was supposed to be. Every dog should have a job, you know, and they're perfectly capable of finding their own jobs. They are extremely intelligent. I know one, somebody's dog goes and gets them the panogenics conditioner every night because she wants her massage. <laughs> okay, today we're gonna talk about the standard, how it applies to your dog, and the fact that you have to analyze your dog. Once you've washed it and conditioned it, washed it and dried it, you have to be very honest with yourself about what it looks like so you can make perfection for the ring. And the faults aren't necessarily in the dog. How many people come to me and say, my dog has a great top line in the bathtub. So what you want to do is stand up and look at your dog, make sure they're properly balanced, and that they do represent the standard. It amazes me how many people have never read their standard. The Newfoundland is a sweet dispositioned dog that acts neither dull nor ill-tempered. He is a devoted companion, a multi-purpose dog, at home, on land, and in the water. The Newfoundland is capable of draft work and possesses natural life-saving abilities. The Newfoundland is a large, heavily coated, well-balanced dog that is deep-bodied, heavily boned, muscular, and strong. A good specimen of the breed has dignity and proud head carriage. The following description is that of the ideal Newfoundland. Any deviation from this ideal is to be penalized to the extent of the deviation. Structural and movement faults common to all working dogs are as undesirable in Newfoundlands as in any other breed, even they are not specifically mentioned herein. <clears throat> Size, proportion, substance. Average height for an adult dog 28 inches, for adult bitches, 26 inches. 
Approximate weight of adult dog ranges from 130 to 150 pounds. Adult bitches from 100 to 120 pounds. The dog's appearance is more massive throughout than the bitches. Large size is desirable, but never at the expense of balance, structure, and correct gait. The Newfoundland is a slightly longer dog than tall when measured from the point of the shoulder to the point of the buttocks and from the withers to the ground. He is a dog of considerable substance, which is determined by spring of rib, strong muscle, and heavy bone. This is a beautiful example of a bitch. Um, the amazing Andy. She does it all. Every Newfoundland needs a job. And Andy does all the jobs extremely well. Stand up. Okay. Now we'll start with Andy here. The head is massive with a broad skull. That's Andy. Slightly arched crown, crown strongly developed occipital bone, which is right here. I know, occipital bones are right here. Cheeks are well developed. Eyes are dark brown. Nice cheeks. Browns and grays may have lighter eyes, should be penalized only extent color affects their expression. They are relatively small, deep set, and spaced white apart. They're kind of almond shaped too. Eyelids fit closely with no inversion. Ears are relatively small and triangular with rounded tips. They are set on the skull level or slightly above the brow. That's right where they belong. When the ear is brought forward, it reaches to the inner corner of the eye on the same side. Expression is soft and reflects the characteristics of the breed. Benevolence, intelligence, and dignity. Forehead and face are smooth and free of wrinkles. Slope of the stop is moderate. Because of the well-developed brow, it may appear abrupt in profile. So you see it's abrupt in profile, but when I put my thumb there, you can see it's sloped. The muzzle is clean cut. Depth and length are approximately equal. The length from the tip of the nose to the stop being less than from the stop to the occiput. Here is less than this. The top of the muzzle is rounded, and the bridge in profile is straight or only slightly arched. Teeth meet in a scissors or level bite. Drop lower incisors in an otherwise normal bite are not in indicative of a skeletal malocclusion and should be considered only a minor deviation. This is what a perfect bite looks like in a Newfoundland. Beautiful scissor, everything needs. Good girl. Uh, neck and top line. Neck is strong, well set on the shoulders, and long enough for proud head carriage. A water dog has to have a neck so they can keep their head above water when they swim and breathe. The back is strong, broad, and muscular, and is level from just behind the withers to the croup. The chest is full and deep, with the brisket reaching at least down to the elbows. Ribs are well sprung, with the anterior third of the rib cage tapered to allow elbow clearance. The flank is deep, the croup is broad, and slopes slightly. Tail. Tail set follows the natural line of the croup. The tail is uh, broad at the base and strong. It has no kinks, and the distal bone reaches to the hock. When the dog is standing relaxed, his tail hangs straight or with a slight curve at the end. When the dog is in motion or excited, the tail is carried out, but does not curl over the back. So. You can see she has a good top line, sloping with her straight croup, and a nice slight at the end. Her tail is indeed broad at the base, and she does not carry a high tail carriage. It does not go over the back. Um, let's see, four quarters. Shoulders are muscular and well laid back. Elbows lie directly below the highest point of the withers. And that is where Miss Andy excels. Highest point of the withers. There they are. Well, there are two high points of the withers. 
the one the judge feels, which is actually the top corner, which goes over the front of the leg, and the central line, which is the high point of the withers, goes over the back of the leg. And hers fits that perfectly. Four legs are muscular, heavily boned, straight, and parallel to each other. The elbows point directly to the rear. The distance from elbow to the ground equals about half the dog's height. Pasterns are strong and slightly sloping. Feet are proportionate to the body in size, webbed, cat foot in type, and the dew claws may be removed. And I don't know if you can see this, but Andy has two beautiful straight legs that point forward. And they are indeed about half her height. So she's absolutely perfect there. The coat, the adult Newfoundland has a flat, water-resistant double coat, tends to fall back into place when rubbed against the nap. The outer coat is coarse, moderately long, and full, either straight or with a wave. The undercoat is soft and dense, although it is often less during the summer months or in warmer climates. Hair on the face and muzzle is short and fine. The backs of the legs are feathered all the way down. The tail is covered with long, dense hair. Excess hair may be trimmed for neatness. Whiskers need not be trimmed. And she indeed falls back. When you push it forward, it goes right back where it belongs. She has beautiful feathers and beautiful pants in the rear. And the tail is to the point of the hock. And it should be kind of an oval shape. What it is is kind of a long-haired otter tail, which is what is found on a lab. And it shouldn't form a flag, which is a long thing like an iris setter has. Yes. Color is secondary to type, structure, and soundness. Recognized Newfoundland colors are black, brown, gray, and white, and black. Solid colors, blacks, browns, and grays may appear as solid colors or solid colors with white at any or some of all of the following locations. Chin, chest, toes, tip of tail. Any amount of white found at these locations is typical and is not penalized. Also typical are the tinge of bronze on a black or gray coat and lighter furnishings on a brown or gray coat due to sun bleaching. Lancier, white base coat, black markings, typical the head is solid black or black with white on the muzzle, with or without a blaze. There is a separate black saddle and black on the rump extending onto the tail. Markings on either solid color lanciers might deviate considerably from the described and should be penalized only to the extent of the deviation. Clear white or white with minimal ticking is preferred. Beauty of markings should be considered only when comparing dogs of otherwise comparable quality and never at the expense of type, structure, and soundness. Disqualifications. Any colors or combinations of colors not specifically described are disqualified. Gait. The Newfoundland in motion has good reach, strong drive, and gives the impression of effortless power. His gait is smooth and rhythmic, rhythmic covering the maximum amount of ground with a minimum number of steps. Four legs and hind legs travel straight forward. As the dog speed increases, the legs tend towards single tracking when moving. A, a slight roll of the skin is characteristic of the breed. Essential to good movement is the balance of correct front and rear assemblies. Temperament, sweetness of temperament is the hallmark of the Newfoundland. This is the most important single characteristic of the breed. But this is something I think all people need to know. You should also read the English standard, the Canadian standard, and the FCI standard. Because each of them talks about the same thing, but slightly differently. And one of the things the Canadian standard says is you should have a 45 degree angle from the withers to the point of shoulder and another 45 degree angle, making a 90 degree angle with the two of them together from the elbow to the point of shoulders. And these should be of equal length. Hip bone to the uh, stifle should be equal length from the stifle to the hock. 
of which Andy's is beautifully. So that works out very nicely. This is going to give you a front match to a rear, so you're going to have both reach and drive. If you have more rear than front, you have more problems of movement than you have more front than rear. But either way is not correct. But right here, we have the shoulder. If you look from the rear forward, you can see how this shoulder ruff is standing out beyond the um, with the rear. So we need to take that down. accordingly. And this is also going to show off our beautiful neck more. This technique that I'm using is called scissor over comb. This is exactly what your hairdresser does. And Andy's what, about three, three and a half, you said? She'll be three in August. Three in August, okay. So she's just coming into her prime. It's very important to have your spine straight when you're cutting shoulders. If you have the dog out of show position, you will have a nice groove right there, <clears throat> and your two sides will not match. And the front should come straight down. And about halfway between if you pick the midline of the body, this is where your prosternum should be. And indeed it is. <clears throat> but it's a good idea to show that to the judge. I haven't found anything a Newfoundland can't do. They are truly an all-purpose dog. And people never think about them herding. They're excellent herding dogs. You want to make sure you have your, brand, your bend right at the prosternum, which is right here. Sit. Good girl. Good girl. I know, I'm not your regular trainer. And you just met me about half an hour ago. But if you come in here, you can see where your shoulder naturally starts over there and here. And for some peculiar reason, the original Newfoundlands did not grow hair in here like this. But adding these bigger coats, Newfoundlands have started growing hair like that and that off the sides. And it makes for a rather strange looking front. And then somehow you end up with a bit of a monopod look as well. And there's also a natural line of short hair that grows between this big bib and the chest. And if you trim it up from the bottom, this, you can take that out. But it's just a little easier to trim the front of the chest that way. You can actually get a bit in between those front legs. As you can see, we're now starting to get a neckline. Which should be started up from right behind these ears. Now with the front legs, we want a smooth transition from the leg into the feather. You don't want it to stick out on a flat line or anything like that because that stops your eye and makes you think the bone is smaller. Whereas if you include the feather, as part of the leg and blend it in. I think Eric would comb it all forward like this and make this nice smooth line up there. And when he combs it back down, it's all smooth. He just takes it, makes it like a 90 degree angle and then you cut off everything that isn't perfectly 
straight. And then when you comb it back down, you have no holes, it's perfectly smooth. The trouble is the best position for cutting a dog is standing right in front of the area in which you're cutting. This does not make for the best video. You want to comb up. And as I said, her feet have been perfectly done, so there's not much I can do, but you hit the two front toes And then you hit the sides. You kind of square it off. And then I come in underneath with the points like this. And this is how I trim the hair between the pads at the ends. And you look like you have a nice short cap foot. Now for the top, you can comb them up and comb it all over to one side. Anything sticking out, you take off. And then if you comb it all over to the other side, same thing. These are difficult cuts because this is not my normal angle. And then when you comb it all up, you comb it all forward. And there should be nothing sticking out here around that and that should give you the perfect cat foot. You might have to clean up just a little in here or here, but that basically gives you the perfect cat foot thing, shape. And a cat foot has a very high arch and it's very tight. And it's round. Hence you make a square to make it round. It does work. But this corrects any problems if you have uh, too long toes in the front, too short toes on the side, by making that square by hitting the front and then the sides, you eliminate cutting into the short toes. Uh, can you see how smooth this is and how much this stands out? This makes your nice, smooth, long neck into the shoulder, and it's the same width as the hips, whereas this is going to stick out beyond the hips. Now, one of the things that is most useful is always keeping the comb between the ear and your scissor, and they will never be able to flick it into the comb, and you have you cut the ear, because that happens. First thing I want to do is edge my ear. I want to go right up to the very edge of the skin. And I go both sides, front and back. And you must hold your scissor very lightly so somebody could knock it out of your hand very easily at any time. That will produce the best, most even cuts. And because I'm holding it so lightly, I can feel the difference between hair and skin. Hold it in tight. I start at the bottom and work up. Because Newfoundlands naturally have short hair on the bottoms of their ears, and it graduates to longer stuff up here. And when I stand the whole thing out at the end, what I'm aiming for is basically a ball. So I graduate my cut, gradually lengthening it as I go up the ear. Now we've got the leg cut, the chest cut. And we've got to come down to this area 
behind the leg. And we really, since a Newfoundland is supposed to be 50-50, from here to here, we have to show the full length of the leg. And if you have a hair hanging down, sometimes the judges only think the hair's, the leg starts there. And when in reality, you come in behind, you see it starts all the way up here. So what we need to do is take this hair, comb it to a right angle, and then you go the other way. Do the same thing. Another thing you can do is take this leg, pick it up, take this up where you left off from the front. Now basically what you're trying to do with a Newfoundland cut is show what is the structure underneath the dog through the fur? And the Newfoundland's bottom, or chest, does not do this. It does this. So therefore, you want to curve this hair right around and show the line of the rib cage. And you can see how showing this line of the rib cage very nicely also shows off the line of the leg. Another thing you may want to do is I'm just barely tipping. It's just 90 degrees off center. Pull it over. And then when you comb it down, it's perfectly smooth. In here, you have a rib cage, which stops here, and a loin, which is here. This. So therefore, it's not a straight line across. Now, it's not a dramatic angle or anything like an Irish setter, but there is a definition between a rib cage and a loin. Of course, we also have knee socks in here, right here, which come, they're actually the hair hanging off the inside of the hind leg, which you really want to use for angulation. And I don't want to make this look laser cut either. I actually want to keep it pretty shaggy. I'd actually get in there and do some hand plucking. And if they have long hair on their back, although well, it's really not on the back, but see, Andy's pretty good and tight. She's not too roly-poly. But the long hair from down here will actually come up and do this over the back. So when you see these strange top lines in the ring, it's the hair down here that's to blame. Not so to correct that, what you do is take your fist and slide along till it stops right at the leg. Right at the other side of your fist is the line you must trim on. And that it doesn't make a hole. What it does is simply show the loin of the dog. Judges like to see defined dogs in the ring, not just big blobs of black hair with feet hanging out the bottom. How can you judge something like that from a distance? You have to put your hands on it. But when you got a class of 30 or 40 Newfoundlands, it's hard to remember exactly what you felt here and what you felt there. Of course, movement's going to tell you a lot, and a lot of other things are too. But why not give your dog its best advantage? Now, knee socks. I've had people cut these off, and I go, oh, no, 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 no. Remember, point of hip, which is in here somewhere, there it is, to the stifle, it's equal from stifle to hock. So this is where your angle is, right here. So I cut this line right back through between the legs. And I give myself my nice point of stifle there. All Newfoundlands grow bushel butts. And what you want to see is this from behind looks like this. You don't want to see that.
I suppose Eric would pull it back and cut it off like this. Up stand. I know, this tickles. Stop. And also pull the same thing forward. Stop. Then you comb it down to see if you've cut enough. No. In my rear, I want my hock perpendicular to the table. And when it is, the back, the furthest point back of the rear end is the ischium, which should be right over this toe, which it is. Which means she has great rear angulation. Get those as short as you can. Widest points on the sides. Go to the side. Anything that sticks out to take off. Go to the other side. Anything that sticks out, take off. Then you come forward. Round it off. And come underneath. Come up again. Should have the perfect round ball. Now, the hocks are two parallel lines determined by the foot at the widest point. So what you do is you come out to the side, right angle, stop, and you go straight down. Anything that sticks out wider than that widest point. Also, making sure to smooth this right into the foot. There's always this little piece at the bottom, right here, and I don't care how far you back them off the table, this is always still a problem right here. So I just put my knuckles right in there and just trim across like a windshield wiper. Here again, we're just combing at that nice right angle. I usually start with the ear and I only trim usually about halfway up the ear for the ear and then the rest of it comes in with the top of the head. It just seems to me to be a little easier to blend it that way. And I try and keep my comb between the ear and the scissor. You want to get as close to the leather as possible. You want to get right up next to it. That's why you hold your scissors very lightly Use your action with your thumb so that you can feel the difference between hair and skin. Because when you go around the edge, I cut at a right angle to the hair and blunt the ends because this, if, I don't know if you can see it, but that makes a much thicker looking ear. And the judge wants to see good leather on the new vizier and standard calls for it. Okay, now you're going to lay the comb in here. And I start at the bottom because Newfies have short hair on the bottoms of their ears and I want to graduate it up to the same level as the top of the head. But I'm going to stop about halfway and then when I do the head, I'm going to blend the top in. I want to comb this head straight up. And you kind of change the angle of the head so you can see it against the background and see where it's not out of round. You're taking very, very little hair, just tipping. I 
And see, that makes a nice round head. If you look at it straight on, and pull this here forward. You see, I have this hole here. I want to smooth all this out. base of the ear, which is right here. And you also want to come under the chin. Make sure you have all that blending in. is a long-haired otter tail. Otter tail is what a Labrador Retriever has. It's an oval. It's shorter on the top, a little longer on the sides, and longest on the bottom. But you want that oval. You do not want a flag, which is a straight piece of hair hanging down. So you comb it all down, pull it out, and make sure you get all the way to the base. And when it falls down, it will fall perfect. And that makes a perfectly lovely tail. So I think the sand is absolutely perfect. <laughs>